So I guess everyone here knows the pain with security issues and that some made it to the news and made us laugh, but some made us cry. And our next guest um, will take us to a little <coughs> security expedition in Borkenland. So watch out, there are dangerous security problems by Hattie. Have him a warm applause and have fun with the talk. Welcome, everybody. Um, let's start with a talk, uh, security expedition in Borkenland. Uh, yeah, I'm talking about uh, information security, and there are three fundamental aspects, plus Neuland, and that's the reality today. But let's see what are the three fundamental aspects of information security. It's CIA. So you first think about these guys here, but it's totally wrong because these are the three fundamental aspects. It's C for confidentiality, it's I for integra integrity, and A for availability. That are the three, three fundamental aspects. But I will show you now that all these three uh, aspects are going to have problems in today's information security, and all of them get like, somehow broken. Um, I will combine it with a security 101 for everybody, for people who are not really into IT security. So there are a lot of different uh, um, Acronyms there, let's uh, check it out. So for first, there is CV. CV stands for Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures. It's an industry standard, and it's a naming convention, and it's for public, publicly known security vulnerabilities. Uh, there's an example uh, CV uh, that's, that's the CV of Eternal Blue. That's the exploit uh, zero day from the NSA, which was used for WannaCry, for example, this uh, CV number. Then there is also CVSS. CVSS is a common vulnerability scoring system. It's like a scoring system for, uh, for scoring the, uh, the, the vulnerability. Like zero is like it's like not a big problem, and 10 is like just shut, shut down the system and uh, trash it away and build a new one or fix all the bugs. And it's based on a formula, and they're, def they're def depending on different metrics. And it's also a free and open industry standard. Well, let's go to the first uh, security fault. So it's, one is like command injection. So the, the idea is to inject own controlled commands into a system, like in, for example, like the classic one is like some command interface on your router where you can like ping to some hosts. And then you just like make a semicolon and put some bash commands in, in there and you can just execute some shell commands on your router if it's like really bad implemented. That's like a classic command injection. Let's uh, check out the first uh, category of me. It's called, uh, yeah, just fail. So the first uh, category is just fail, and that's my example for this. It's the NPM 5.7.0 release. So the thing is, uh, this release uh, was uh, not properly tagged as a pre-release. So it was not a release, but it was a pre-release. And it was rolled out by update, and people just updated it. And the problem was it fucked up all permissions from the file system if you run it as sudo. So it changed it recursively in the folder. So if you like run it and you couldn't like fix it easy, you have to like restore a backup to fix all the file permissions. And that's the CV number down there. And have like a really interest. So I checked out the the. the the GitHub issue for that, and it was quite uh, well funny, and to cr and some crying was also involved. Let's check it out. So there was this uh, first comment was this destroyed free production server after a single deploy. So you think okay, and then there is the next guy who says, why are you using pre-release version in production? Just asking. But the problem was, it wasn't released as pre-release, and he didn't know that it was like a buggy pre-release. So it's not the, the, the fault of Juggy that the uh, update just destroyed free production server. There are even more comments, but they're like my two favorite about this issue. So the next one is also one really sad uh, category. It's called, can I have a new bank, please? So maybe you read about it. Uh, so if you have a great mobile app for banking, and you got this warning. So it's on German, but it states uh, something or someone is like changing your connection and a connection test to secure outbank.io uh, say that it's not possible for a secure connection. 
So please contact support. So if you get this warning on your mobile banking app, it will just shut it down and don't use it. But if you're the, the great bank, uh, Comdirect Bank AG of Germany, you just write on Twitter and tell the people, oh, we know the issue, but just press OK and you can just use the app. So the problem was their SSL certificate just ran out. And they just say, OK, we don't care. It's, you can just still use this app. And so they're telling the users to still use this unsecure app for mobile banking. Uh, so if you have this bank, maybe, maybe you should like go to other bank and put there your money where they like care for IT security. Let's go to the next uh, terminology. So backdoor. Backdoor is a built-in method to bypass authentication or encryption of our system. And I have uh, two uh, examples for a backdoor. The first one is Cisco. So Cisco is a big uh, network equipment vendor. And he's like a ho has a long backdoor history. Uh, but there is a positive thing. They are, they are doing internal auditing. And they found quite a lot of uh, backdoors uh, during their internal auditing. Uh, so that's a positive thing. But still, there is a problem. There are backdoors in their products. And they're very creative about fitting synonyms for the backdoors. I have three examples for you. So the first one is uh, undocumented user account with privilege level 15. That's when, OK, it's quite creative. But the other one is even better, undocumented static user credentials for the default administration and administrative account. It's also, it's like even a better name. But my favorite is the undocumented test interface. There's just some port on the router and just connect there and you get root access. Really nice backdoor. But they have even more of them. But they're like three examples for the creative uh, synonyms for backdoor. So the next one back backdoor is really cool. So Tenda AC15 backdoor. So it's a Chinese internet Wi-Fi router. And um, there are easy root access in three steps on this device. So the first one is you, request, uh, you make a request to slash go from slash telnet on the router. And it starts the telnet on the router. The next step is you choose freely from free existing default accounts on a device that are root accounts. You have like a user, admin, and another a third account. And then you just need to guess the password, and then you have root access on the account. Are there some guesses for the password? Well, it is not test, but it's close. It has as much letters as test. Uh, the, the password was 1234 for all free accounts. <laughs> and then you log in and you have root access on the router. It's really handy. So if you lost your, your root password of your admin account, you just use this one. Um, so yeah, the ninth is called they want their passwords back. So please don't use this password for your router. And, and update your router if you get firmware upgrades. It's also a problem that often devices don't get updates. So the next one, out bypass. Is out authentication bypass like you can log in somewhere without a username or without a password or without both? So that's the idea behind authentication bypass. Um, well, let's go to Fight Club. Do you know from which year Fight Club was? When was Fight Club released? Some ideas which year it was released? It was released uh, 1999. So the blast from the past. And 1999, there was this company called Netscape. And had a, um, a Netscape Enterprise Server and Netscape Fast Track Server as a software. And there was a remote attack where it got privilege gained via HTTP basic authentication. Uh, that was 1999. Well, uh, that's already a, a really bad um, security bug. But, well, what's this? Do you have uh, guesses? Back to the future, yeah. Well, let's go back to the future, to 2018. Um, well, there is HP ILO 4 authentication bypass and remote code execution. So. Uh, HP's ILO 4 is a, rem a remote management console for servers. It's a, it's a hardware card where you can remotely access your servers and um, 
And there was the authentication bypass and a remote execution in this uh, device. It was found by the Airbus research team. Uh, they invested five man months, man months for re reverse engineering the whole firmware. It is from 2017, but the broad public was uh, knowledge was in 2018 when they presented their whole research at the conference. And it's quite interesting how it works. I have a GIF of the live demo here, and you can check it out. So they're requesting the admin interface, and it says 401 unauthorized. So they used great Python tools and just print 29 times A. Then they add a header to the request with the header connection with that is 29 times the A. And then press enter. And I got full admin access. So it's like, OK. Uh -huh. And yeah, we're administrator. Great. Yeah, it's really fun because you have like 10,000 servers out there. You can just get administration privileges with 29 A's. Um, yeah, the problem is uh, you see this equation, 1999 equals 2018. Mathematically, it's not quite correct. But in IT security, it is because in both cases, it was a buffer overflow, which caused, it, caused the bug. Um, so if a buffer overflow, it's IT security bug, uh, they managed to overwrite uh, uh, the data, and they could like access administration, administrative accounts. Let's get to the next category. The next category is data richness. So it's the opposite of data minimiza minimization, what is like our goal in IT security, because we don't need all all that of the people. We should just use the data we need for the services. So also thanks to GDPR. So it's unnecessary to have too much data. And it's also like the digital gold of the modern times. Um, there was Google Plus. Uh, they have like, affected 500,000 users by the leak. Uh, they also stolen partially sensible data. And um, the thing is also Google Plus, Google Plus was shut down also because of this. But, well, it's only 500,000 users. It's like not a lot. Well, let's check out our friends of Facebook. So they have like approximately 30 million users affected, like 60 times as much users as this Google Plus leak was affected. But they still didn't, didn't shut down. I don't know why, but sad. Maybe next time. But you see, there's a lot of data leaks happening in 2018, and a lot of user data was affected. Well, let's check out the next category. It's called DOS, denial of service. So the idea behind DOS is uh, make a system unavailable temporary or permanently. Um, so who of you have a friend who have a friend who have a friend that has an IP camera? No one? No one has friends with IP cameras? Oh, one person, at least one person. So this one friend has IP camera, maybe has this IP camera. And if he has this NetWave IP camera, you can make an easy denial of service. So you just send a post request to this camera with a huge body size to the slash URL. And the camera just crashes. So it's really handy. You just send a post request, and it just crashes. There is a proof of concept on GitHub about this. So if you have it at home, you can try it yourself, or you can throw it away, because I don't think it gets updated. And yeah, it's also classic IoT embedded hardware, which like is bad implemented, and it just crashes when you send a huge body size. Then our <coughs> next category is RC. You all heard it at the HPI ILO 4. So RC is a remote code execution. Uh, so the idea is you can execute on a ro remote target your own code or programs. Um, and so most of you are probably gamers. And most of you also use this, what is like a, a well-known gaming platform? Nintendo. Steam? Yeah, Nintendo. But yeah, Steam is a good, a good, good uh, gaming platform. Because Steam had a remote code execution for nearly 10 years. And it was like this year found uh, it when you sent a mail from UDP packet, uh, it was enough to trigger the exploit. 
There is a really extensive write-up under the web page here. So for 10 years, it was like theoretically possible to exploit a remote code execution in, in Steam. Like a lot of users would be affected. We don't know if it was uh, exploited, but it was in, in, in the client there, the bug. Uh, really impressive is that uh, after the reporting, the Steam team patched it after eight hours. So after eight hours, it was already patched by the, by the Steam team. So our next um, thing is POC, proof of concept. So the idea of proof of concept is that you have like uh, some example, and with that you show that you can exploit the bug. Uh, so the classic proof of concept uh, is that you pop a calculator on your system. And that's like the classic uh, um, thing that you show the people that you uh, exploit the remote code execution or code execution on the system that you can like run um, calculator the XA or um, Xcalc. So, so in my, in, my in my first two iterations of this talk, I didn't have a live demo. And then all the time people came to me and told me, hello, can I have a live demo? And so I told me, so I, so I said, okay, well, let's prepare something. And yeah, we will have a live demo and what could possibly go wrong? So I have this specially prepared laptop here. So I have here, um, no, I don't want updates, no. Um, I have a Ubuntu 16.04 without patches. I have a virtual box with a Debian system. It's nearly patched. So let's start my virtual box system. So, So I'm already sorry for the username of this virtual box. It was at first my mailbox test server, or a test on mail server. But you will see yourself. It did a good job as a mail server, but now it has to be exploited. So, um, so if you are using a, a computer and you normally use it to surf on the internet and check out web pages, and you also want some cool desktop backgrounds for your laptop. So this is really not so, could be more fancy. And then you see this fancy web page where, you, where they offer you sweet cat pictures. And I say, okay, let's download this sweet cat picture. I want this cat picture. Okay, let's download it. Let's open it. Okay. And it's broken. No. Well, my live demo just failed, but we will try again. So. Um. So let's just download again. Nope. Well, then we'll just do the reset game. That works most of the time. Uh. So.
Well, let's test again. Now it should probably work. So let's go again to our great uh, page where we can get download cat pictures. Okay. It seems to work. So I just opened my download. And I just got 100 calculators popped up on my screen. So I just opened the download folder. Well, there is a great tool in the command line on Linux. You see all these great calculators. Maybe I can, use it, I can calculate faster with 100 of them. So CMD. OK, kill all xcalc. Good that it's not a Windows, because I don't know the command on Windows for that. All right, so what happened? So I exploited the Go script remote code execution. So it was overseen. So they patched some um, quite the same vulnerability in Go script two years ago, but they overseen this edge case. And uh, it is triggered when it's parsing PostScript, and the thumbnail uh, parser of events in the, in the Nautilus uh, file manager parses the thumbnail. And in the thumbnail embedded is the, is the remote code execution script. And in my case, it pops up 100 calculators. It was found by T Tavis Ormadi, this uh, one known Google security researchers. And there are multiple CVs assigned. Well, that's the first live demo, but I have a second one. So everyone know blockchain is really the new hype in 2018. But I have a better hype for you. It's called exploit chain. So for this, uh, we have to pray for the demo gods that it works. <laughs> so maybe someone has like a MacBook to like sacrifice or something like this. Let's, uh, let's hope that it works. So we go back to our virtual machine. Oh, I have to delete it now. Ah, such great remote executions. Yeah. So you said, OK, this, this cat picture is somehow broken. But this interesting website offers another picture. And it's in uh, 4K resolution. That should be even better. Let's test it out. Let's download the better cat picture. So, so it's really fast, like in my home country, Austria, where I don't have internet. Yes, 3.5 kilobytes. Come on, internet. Well, uh, I have, I think I have a copy of this on my laptop. Because we don't want to wait 10 minutes. Ah, it's getting faster. But now you, feel, you know how people feel with some, fifth, with some 10 megabit uh, internet at their home. Well, I, I don't wait for the download. I have a, a copy on my a desktop. So we just uh, f uh, say we just downloaded it. OK. Um, so we go again our downloads. And there is this cool, yeah, yeah, broken. Let's delete. So there is, I say let's, we have downloaded it. And then this happens. Again, a terminal pops up. And I got this one. Oh, 
what just happened. Uh, so let's see, I have a shell here with root and it's called Milky Way. So let's check out the, the host system. So it's also Milky Way, host name, let's see, Milky Way. So we have a shell on the host system of the virtual box. Let's check out here. Yeah, so I got my username of the host system, I got the running VMs in the virtual machine, I got my running mail, and so to check, to really show that I'm on the host system, I will just shut it down. Oh, power off. And my laptop is shut down. So, what the fuck did just happen? Um, well, I've implemented the exploit chain and I just powered off my laptop on the root shell of my host system. And so the exploit chain was, I downloaded this 4K cat pictures, I opened it in Nautilus, I triggered the remote code execution uh, of GhostScript, and then I used the VirtualBox uh, escape exploit to escape to the host system. And then as a, like a, the third exploit, I just used dirty call to get root, ex, root, root shell on the host system. So that was the, the whole exploit chain. And it's now powered off the laptop. Um, so the setup is, uh, it's a un, the host system is an unpatched uh, Ubuntu 16.04.4. Uh, it has to be a, a specific virtual box uh, version. It is 5.26 with this uh, number. The guest system is uh, nearly patched uh, Debian 9 with GUI. And on the guest user, I have no password option for the pseudo rights. And it's a self-written exploit chain with public available exploits in Python, in Bash, and I also modified the proof of concept because the, the first proof of concept of the VirtualBox escape only worked on, on the command line with no, with no graphic user interface and I implemented it that it works on the graphic user interface too. So the virtual box escape uses the virtual, uh, virtual RAM for the exploit. Uh, so the shared video buffer between host and, and guest system. And there is an uh, excellent write-up by the proof of concept author. And in the end, I put uh, um, um, a shell code into the buffer and it got executed by the, by the guest. And it's a bug in a, in a in the optimization of the compiler of the virtual box compile process. So Dirty Cow, uh, it's this CV, uh, it's homework for the audience to check out what's the problem with Dirty Cow to get root access on the device. So the next thing, let's check out hardware security. There is also hardware out there, not only software. Let's check out uh, our favorites, or one of my favorites, because like, a lot of hype for a lot of fuck-ups. It's Meltdown and Spectra. So Meltdown and Spectra are bugs, or like design faults in the CPU, in a modern CPU architecture, and it leads to sensible data exfiltration, extraction of the CPU. It's like a hardware bug. Uh, so the thing is, uh, the speculative execution is used. So it, it pre-computes other values um, at the same time, and the values you don't use, it just throws away. But with this uh, feature, you can extract the, the pre-computed values, which you would throw away. There are software fixes out there for that, but there's a really big performance loss. So yeah, software fixes there, but so big performance loss that even some companies need to buy new hardware because they don't have enough performance for the software. There was a great meltdown patch by Microsoft for Windows 7 and Server 2008. There was the PLM4 page tables accessible for everyone on the system. So the PLM4 page tables are the master page tables in the system, which should be only readable and writable by the kernel itself, so no user should be accessible to it. And just everyone could like just write in there and modify it and load own pages. So in the end, it was like this. Like, I get PML4 page tables, you get PML4 page tables, everyone gets PML4 page tables. So it's really bad because like everyone could just modify the whole system and uh, like uh, mess with it around, and it was a patch. They fixed it some like a month later, but it was still a really bad patch. 
Well, some of you also like uh, drive cars. Uh, some of you maybe drive, especially this car. Uh, it's BMW. So BMW has a TCU, a telematics control unit in there. And there are affected vehicles from 2012 to 2018. And there was a remote attack via GSM. They could, could, they could execute arbitrary uh, unauthorized diagnostic requests on a CAN, CAN bus. Uh, they are working with BMW. They should release a 2019 extensible write-up about the, about the vulnerabilities. Now we just know it's like a remote attack and you, and you can execute arbitrary unauthorized diagnostic requests, but there are no details about what's the fault. So probably you heard of, you, you use locks for lock picking, for example, but some people are really like uh, comfortable and they use locks with a fingerprint reader. So if you have like a lock like this, and then you see this screw there, and then you think that should be a secure lock, uh, the vendor thinks it is, because there is this guy on Twitter called Lockpicking La Lawyer who like checks out locks with lockpicking, and he got this lock from this company, and they told him, well, the money quote is the lock is invincible to the people who do not have a screwdriver. Well, like everyone has a screwdriver more or less with him or with her, so you just get your screwdriver, open the lock, and you don't even need a fingerprint. So it's a really bad lock design, and yeah, 2018 security, not here. Well, our next thing is quite interesting. So combine the words mining rigs, data center, 600 in Iceland. So if you combine these words, you get this headline. Bitcoin haste, 600 powerful computers stolen in Iceland. So wait, Iceland is a island and there is like water all around and this computer was in a data center, like some mining rigs. So how you steal 600 mining rigs out of a data center on Iceland where all around water around? Well, we don't know, but they're just escaped. 600 mining rigs just escaped from a data center in Iceland. But there is bonus content. So that's already ridiculous enough, but it could be, it, it can be get more ridiculous because, well, they got like a suspect and they put the suspect into jail and the suspect managed to flee out of jail, get on a plane, and on the plane was also the prime minister of, of Iceland also, and he flew to, to Sweden on the plane. That's like the bonus content. So they got the suspect, suspect gets out of, of the jail via a window and then gets on a plane to Sweden. Nice try. So uh, the next uh, hardware fuck up, it's, uh, it's a combination out of uh, sound and hard disks. So if you have, if you combine this, you get death, death for the hard disks. So there was the NASDAQ, uh, it's a stock uh, operation in, in the Baltic states, or in Sweden, and there was a gas-based fire suppression system, so if a fire starts, it would like, start and, and kill the fire. And um, the, it destroyed the hard disks by releasing the gas at the high speed, and this uh, caused some vibrations and destroyed the hard disks. And like the, well, the sad thing is there was no fire at the data center. They um, released it by accident. And by accident, they also destroyed their hard disks. And the other problem was there were not enough hard disks in Sweden for the servers. So I had to get new hard disks out of another country. They were not operational for five hours. They should start at nine in the morning, and they start like at, at two o'clock in the afternoon. And there were affected markets that were included Sweden, Finland, Denmark, Iceland, and the three Baltic states by this accident. So they had to, they had to import the machines to, to make it operational again. And there's also down a link to another video where the guys are in a data center, and they have a monitoring on the hard disks, 
and they shout on the hard disk at the, at the data center, and you, see, and you see on the monitoring that the I/O just uh, rests in, in the in the in the in the air. So if you shout at hard disk, you can destroy them if you have bad luck. Um, well, I'm nearly at the end. Let's uh, my future predictions. I mean, I must say, 2018 was really rich of uh, fuck ups. I don't have everyone, everything there. There was like some days ago, there was the uh, SQLite uh, remote execution down there. There was even more stuff there. I can't uh, uh, check out everything. But well, 2018 already made a good year for fuck ups. But my prediction for 2019 is the following. Oh. It can't get better. It will be just a race. So the yellow guy is IT, and the bombs are IT security. And we'll try not only to run away, we'll also try to fix the stuff. But until now, we are somewhat just running away of the bugs and not fixing them. So I hope that will, will not be the, the whole reality, but just a part of it. And also one question I also uh, asked myself is, why should I care uh, about all the stuff I just told here? Um, yeah, and my answer is we should care because security problems affect us all in some way. It affects myself for like software I use that is have bugs in there. It affects my grandmother if she uses uh, some buggy router for the internet. If, if it affects my neighbor, if it has my P security cameras. It affects everyone because everyone uses hardware and software with bugs in there. And so my, my motto is, in the end, uh, make the world a safer place, report security vulnerabilities, do research, uh, and because if the world is a safer place, everyone has also a better life. So if you're interested into the uh, all the stuff. I did most of my research on the CV database. So there is. Uh, so if you read CVs, it's quite fun and interesting. You get quite interesting CVs out there, like some uh, command injection in Microsoft servers. Why not? So there is, for example, cvdetails.com for uh, CV details. There are also other web pages. But there are quite interesting CVs out there, like also getting remote execution by email in Outlook. Is also interesting. Why not? Um, that was my presentations. Are there questions of the of the people here? Thank you. Thank you, Hetty, for the talk. We have two microphones on the left and on the right. And if there are any questions, please feel free to ask them. So maybe I will start with a question. What was your favorite security issue? This year, I mean, this year, like Meltdown on Inspector was quite hyped, but like one of my favorite was this npm fuck up because like people just update the servers and the whole production is like just fucked up and they are not even like their fault. That's like was my one of my favorite and this comdirect bank which just tells the users just ignore your certificate. It's everything all fine. It's like the 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 worst uh, thing you can do as a bank. Shut up and take my money. So do we have some questions now? Well, Is then. There? OK, um, so let's give Hetty a big applause. And thank you for that talk. So there are also some contact details. You can also ask me in person. I can also show you. I will, I will public, publish the source code of my exploits on GitHub in the, during the Congress. And you can also talk to me, and I can show you the, the exploits again on my machine, if you like. Else, enjoy the Congress, uh, stay safe, and pet your systems. Thank you very much. <laughs>